Welcome to another episode of Making Comics. Today we're going to be talking about thumbnailing, uh, arguably the most important part of making comics. So, um, as before, I have the script printed out. Uh, I like to print things out. I have a hard time reading things on the computer screen. So, one of the things I do first before I start thumbnailing is I read the script a few times. Um, I try to make sure I have as good an understanding of the story as possible. Uh, one of the things that I'll do is I sp spoke pretty... Um, I spoke a lot with Doug before even getting into thumbnailing and even design characters about the story, you know, asking any questions that I had about, you know, how things were supposed to flow, you know, if I read something I didn't understand it or was kind of confused by it or had any kind of like, well, what's the motivation of this person doing this in this panel or the scene? Ask those questions and get that clarity. So that way, you know, you can see some notes here. Um, that way I have as tight of an understanding of the story that we're trying to tell. So when I go to do thumbnails, I, I know exactly where it's going. I know what what I need to accomplish with each scene and can hopefully tell the story as best as possible. So after I get th that done, I'll go into thumbnailing. Um, I like to do this on paper in these little sketchbooks. These are uh, Baron Fig sketchbooks. I like them. They sell them in packs. The paper's nice. It holds up to ink. Uh, I use my Pentel stylo pens to do these almost exclusively. Um, so some of the things that I'll do, I start out, I'll read the page. One of the things I started doing was I would just, I'll write down like, these are the beats that I need to hit. I, I kind of, I spoke with Doug about this before, but I kind of, you know, he has panel suggestions and then I took those, but you know, a lot of times I'll add beats or moments or change framing to sort of fit either um, some ideas that I had about how to best how to tell the story, but also to sort of work things around what I think feel like my strengths and weaknesses are weaknesses are as far as drawing. Um, you know, I'm trying to push myself, but I also want to be able to get this thing done in a reasonable amount of time. And uh, so, so sometimes you kind of you kind of want to play to your strengths. Um, so the opening scene occurs in, in our lead character, Wilbur's apartment. So I just kind of, I actually looked at a floor plan of a studio I used to live in. Uh, and, uh, and basically laid it out like that. But, but because we come back to the scene, uh, this, this uh, location a few times throughout the story, I wanted to draw a floor plan. So I knew kind of exactly where everything was going to be. So... You can see my layouts for page page one here. Um, again, at the bottom of here, I'm hit. I'm kind of I was writing notes for a few of these pages as far as like these are the beats that I need to hit on each page. Um, you know, the drawing is really rough. It's really just it's it's effectively notes to myself. Um, you know, it, and and a lot of times I'll kind of I'll start something then I'll say oh no I actually want to do this one a different way, so then I'll just draw an arrow. Um, page three, I obviously started. I didn't like it, but I had already drawn out the uh, rectangles and wrote page four and five, so I drew the thumbnails for four and five here. And then came back to doing page three and sort of did a couple variations on it. This was what I kind of ended up going with, but this shot I changed in the pencils, and it's now a down shot. Um, Sort of more like this, but from a higher angle. Actually like this, but from a high angle. Um, you know, and then a lot of times sort of some of the sketching is figuring out some of the uh, the set and, and, and other things. Um, this is our first sort of big action scene. It's a flashback. Um, so I, uh, so again, I'm trying to, you know, some of the, one of the things in the, in the script here, 
Um, he's got a fair amount of dialogue, but I, I kind of like to call out, anytime people are talking, I like to call that out and give it a panel for, for you know, unless if two characters are really, like, are close or whatever. I kind of, I want to get a close-up of, of all these people because I want to establish them because they are, they're important to know who they are. But I don't, real estate-wise, I don't have a lot of space to, to establish these people. So, you know, it was important to, for, 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 to me to get, to at least show their faces in, in at least a medium to, or close-up off the bat because we're not really going to get a close shot of any of them through the rest of the sequence. So again, you know, I'm, I'm going through and, you know, here it's like I'm trying to come up with ideas for, for, for how the action goes down. Um, one of the things that, that we're, we're doing is so the character, you know, time is running out. He's on a clock the whole time. So once we get out of this flashback scene, every single page afterwards, I'm increasing the panel count. So that way it feels like time is, uh, my hope is that it feels like time's speeding up, that we're getting closer and closer to the ultimate uh, ending. Um, so again, you know, it's very rough, very rough notes. So like here, page 13 is a fight scene. Um, I didn't even try to, come up with a the panels because really what I'm trying to come up with what are the moves in a fight and this is mostly undecipherable I think to anyone but me but you know I'm, I'm trying to think of what's the choreograph how am I choreographing this fight um, you know and so there is a there is a flow and I, the one thing that I like to do and I think that uh, Fife's, Fife's Copra is a great book for this but the way that he choreographs action in that book there's everything kind of each move flows into each other so when you go from you know here i have i have you know wilbur's throwing a punch and in the panel two the guy you know he's grabbing his arm and he's he's sort of deflected the punch panel three he's now punching wilbur panel four he's got him in a headlock panel five wilbur's headbutting him six we have a sort of you know, Wilbur's getting back to his feet, and then seven, he's kicking his feet, kicking his, you know, legs out from under him, and then eight, it's the end. But, you know, I'm just trying to come up with, like, like how do these moves, I don't want to make a bunch of, um, I'm trying to make, you know, each shot should have, have an action in it, but also I want to make sure that there's a logic that connects them all. So again, so page 14, I just drew a little bit of the street, so I know kind of this is what the building looks like. It's not a very good building, but again, another sort of uh, another fight scene here. And, and over on this side, you know, here's my thumbnail. And on this side, I'm kind of drawing out some ideas for how they're going to fight. <laughs> um, and then I'm incorporating them into the page. Um, 16, you know, I'm, I, I, again, I'm trying to, now I'm trying to really cram a lot of panels. I'm getting up to 11 panels and, and I'm breaking up, you know, captions and things like that. But 17 was really the, the most complicated one because as we'll go over to it in the script, um, So page 17, you know, there's there are a number of captions and there's a, num a bunch of dialogue, but there's also action that needs to happen. So the first thing I did was I went into a script and I wrote numbers basically for panel numbers for each caption and piece of dialogue. Because I, again, I, want, I knew I wanted to hit 12 panels on this page. So then the first thing I did, then I just basically wrote what I need to happen in each panel be it either a piece of dialogue, a caption, or an action. And, you know, I knew I just wanted to use a, a simple grid because there's going to be a lot of panels. And then and then here on this page, after I kind of got my head, head wrapped around, okay, how is this page going to work? Over here in my thumbnail, then I was able to kind of come up with compositions for each of the 
you know, each of the panels. And again, you can see sort of, you know, I'm drawing alternates down here for, you know, panel four, I couldn't make them my mind, so I'm panel five, so I'm giving myself alternates, which likely when I pencil it, I'll also change that too, who knows, we'll see. But really it's, it's I'm creating a roadmap for myself as to when I go to pencil it, okay, this is mostly where my head's at. And, and you know, I, I do have some room to improvise, but mostly, I, you know, this is all that I think that I need to tell the story. Um, so if you can read these thumbnails, the, the hope is that you'd actually be able to, to, you, you'd get an idea of how the story will flow throughout. Um, of course, when I pencil it, it's going to be a lot clearer. I can show, show the first page. But the uh, I'm penciling it in Procreate on my on the iPad, and so like that's this is the first page, and that's the thumbnail. So again, that's sort of how I'm how I think about thumbnails. Um, it's it's the hardest part I think of of the comics process because it's it's where you do all of the thinking and where you you have to figure out do all the problem solving but it's also like the least and the drawings themselves are you know i'm not dave gibbons they're not they're not great drawings um so uh it's you know it's so it's one of those things where where i think all all the work it happens happens in this phase and it's work that most people don't see, but but it's really important to do it. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I think that I like doing the pencils sort of digitally because it allows you to shift things around, easily make perspective grids and things like that. But I, I just, I think that thumbnailing on paper, you're forced to make decisions and, and we're in, whereas in digital you can iterate for forever, I find that like I do a lot more. I can think a lot clearer on paper than I can in digital. So, anyways, that's my process, and uh, be doing another video about penciling and um, how I take these rough, rough thumbnails and then turn them into pencil pages. So, anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and if you like this, please uh, subscribe, leave a comment, uh, like the video, um, and hopefully I'll be back with some more stuff soon. Thanks.